Now we're in part four of the Cardiac Rhythm Interpretation Workbook. This is on page 39, and we're going to go through some heart rate calculation exercises. And if you'll recall from uh, the previous slide presentation, I, uh, uh, I told you that I felt it was important to use uh, this method of heart rate calculations, especially when you're dealing with bradyarrhythmias and tachyarrhythmias, where uh, being accurate with a heart rate calculation is important. Remember that um, you get a digital readout with your cardiac monitor, but sometimes it's inaccurate because of the presence of artifact. And um, you can count the number of complexes in the six second strip but, uh, and multiply it by 10, but that's not as accurate as this method. And uh, as I suggested before, your, my best advice to you is simply uh, memorize these numbers that you see here, 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 43, 37, 33, 30. Use them consistently, and you will um, commit those to memory, and you'll be able to do these calculations very quickly. So let's look at the first one here. This uh, first ECG, we fall, find a, um, uh, a QRS that falls in a dark line. If the next QRS fell here, uh, then the heart rate would be 300, but it actually falls here, so that makes the heart rate 150. Okay. If we move to the next one, here we find a QRS that falls more or less on a dark line. The heart rate then is 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. And you can pause this at any time if you want to just um, take a look and redo the calculation yourself self to be sure. Here's another one. This looks like a bradyarrhythmia here. And a QRS that falls pretty close to the dark line. And the heart rate here is 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43, 37, 33. That's a pretty slow... Uh, sinus bradycardia. This next one here, you can see the uh, the second QRS complex doesn't fall on a dark line, so that complicates things a little bit, but here's an easy method to uh, calculate this accurately. So here's one QRS that falls in a dark line, uh, 300, 150. So the heart rate is somewhere between 300 and 150. And the difference between 300 and 150 is 150 divided into five small squares. That's 30 beats per millimeter, 30 beats per small square. So in other words, the heart rate is 150, um, 180, and oops, 210. I didn't mean to do that, but 210 here. Let's try this next one here. So again, we find a QRS that falls in the dark line. The heart rate is 300, 150, 175. So this dark line is 100. This one is 75. So the difference between 175 is 25 divided by five small squares is 25. Um, uh, sorry, 25 divided by five small squares is five, actually. <laughs> so that means that uh, the heart rate is 75, 80, 85, 90. This next one, the QRS falls in a dark line here. We have 300, 150, 175, 60, and 50. So the heart rate's between 60 and 50. 60 minus 50 is 10, divided by five small squares is two. So the heart rate is 50, 52, 54, 56. So we have a sinus bradyarrhythmia of 56. Here we have a QRS that falls pretty close to a dark line. 300, 150, 175, 60. So the heart rate's between 75 and 60. 75 minus 60 is 15, divided by five small squares is three beats per millimeter. So the heart rate is 63, 66, 69. And lastly, this one, uh, we have the QRS that falls in a dark line here, so we'll count backwards. That's uh, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43, 37. Between 43 and 37, we'll say that's 40. Uh, 